Hey guys, good morning. So we're here at the church again, getting ready to do another small planting project that I'm really excited about. So you might have seen the video where we planted up these huge giant containers and I think they turned out really pretty. I did see a few comments about the side of the pot and this is hard water deposits that are kind of leaking through um, because this is porous material. It's made out of black clay. Um, and so I think we might be able to power wash that off. I honestly didn't notice it until I started seeing all the comments and I thought, oh, you know what? Probably should clean that pot up a little bit. Uh, sometimes my attention to detail is just not quite there when I'm so excited about everything else going on right here. Um, so where we're planting today is right in this little corner and it's kind of an awkward little spot because right now um, it, it used to be full sun, like full full baking sun and now it's transitioned into more of a shady spot but it does get a slice of hot afternoon sun right through here and then um, like this time of year the sun is a little bit lower in the sky um, and so it will get a little bit of afternoon sun so I think we've planted a couple or picked out a couple of different things to plant um, that'll do really well in those types of conditions so right here First off, we have a Bloodgood Japanese maple. Now you might look at the tag and think that this tree gets way too big for this small of an area. They're extremely slow growing. Um, and in our area, they're definitely, they're like the furthest thing from native here. So we usually use them as small specimen accent trees in our flower beds. So that's why I think it's gonna do really well here. And it'll eventually kind of fill up this space a bit, but we can keep it trimmed very easily to size. It's kind of like keeping a tree in a topiary form. Uh, same kind of principle with this. And I think that this color is gorgeous to contrast the background here. Now you might notice this chain right here. Um, so this is a rain chain for the awning here. Now we hardly ever get rain, but when we do, the rain will come down here and there's a little channel dug um, right through here. In fact, they're gonna reroute the channel so that I can plant my next uh, plant that I'm gonna talk to you about kind of right in where the channel is right now. Um, so I am going to suggest that maybe they paint it black or re replace it with a black one so it doesn't show so much, but you can easily keep the tree kind of pruned out from around. And I'm kind of hoping that the tree grows kind of in front of it a little bit and masks it. Um, but I'm not the chain lady, I'm the plant lady. So I'm just gonna focus on the plants today and um, we may get this taken care of a little bit later. Uh, so the next plant I'm putting in is this gorgeous oak leaf hydrangea. So this one is called Gatsby Gal. And the reason I chose this one uh, is because its size is perfect. Um, not only, you know, I mean, look at the, this is the fall color, it's starting to turn. I mean, not only the foliage shape, look at that, the huge oak leaf shaped leaves here, but it blooms early summer uh, through late summer and then it hangs on to its blooms and it blooms white and then they age into a really pretty kind of pink color uh, of course you know they don't quite act the same in their plant cans as they do once they're in the ground so next year I'm expecting this one to be in full glorious bloom so this one the Gatsby Gal only grows about five to six feet tall and wide so it can completely fill in this whole space right here I mean it's got all the room it needs and that's the thing with this type of hydrangea, they bloom on old wood. So it's best to put them in an area where you can just let them go. Um, you don't want to put it somewhere where you're gonna have to plan on pruning it because the possibility of plant, uh, pruning off its blooms is really high. Um, so just put it somewhere where it can grow. And the Gatsby Gal stays smaller than the traditional oak leaf hydrangeas. So it's kind of the perfect uh, plant here. So this one right here, I believe is a five zone five through nine. Um, so plenty winter hardy enough for us here. We garden in a zone five. And then this tree is a zone five through eight. Um, so I think what it will do, I brought my supplies, we'll get these put in the ground and then I think they're gonna come through. They've got a crew that's gonna come through and put some mulch down and it's gonna look so pretty. But I just thought I would share this process with you guys because it's so fun to be somewhere else and put in some gorgeous stuff that other people are gonna be able to benefit from. So anyway, let me get these in the ground. I got them both planted and I think they turned out perfect for this area honestly all we need is a fresh layer of mulch and it's gonna look really really beautiful and I did want to show you this area I should have probably done that in the beginning so you could kind of see where these plants were going 
This awning right here is brand new, and Aaron was mentioning as I was planting him that he thinks that these will get a little bit of morning sun, and I, I do think that's right, because the sun will come up, it'll shine underneath the awning for probably about an hour, and then, you know, like I said, they'll get that afternoon sun when it comes through once it's on the other side of the awning. Um, so I wanted to talk about light requirements really quickly uh, because I think it's really important for actually both of these plants. So this one first, I do believe it's recommended that they get a minimum of four to six hours of sun in order to perform the very best, like to get the best growth, the be most amount of blooms, the best color. Um, so I don't know that we're going to be quite there in this area. So I'm going to be watching this shrub. and. Honestly, I don't care if this one doesn't get loaded with blooms. I just like the leaf structure of this plant so much and I think it's the perfect weighty, bold texture right here that I, I don't mind if it doesn't put on as many blooms. I mean, of course, if the plant looks like it's struggling down the road, we can always move it somewhere else where it's getting a little bit more sun. But here we kind of err more on the protection side of things um, when it comes to hot afternoon sun. Uh, and that kind of goes for this one as well. So Japanese maples are slow growers by nature, um, but here in Eastern Oregon, we can't not put them out in full sun. Their tags say they need full sun, which they normally do in a more mild climate. But here they just crisp up and burn. Um, and you can see this one was displayed in a little bit of sun and it's already starting to burn and there's a little some tip burn going on. So I think that it'll really enjoy this spot. And the fact that it doesn't get as much light means it'll grow even slower and it'll stay even smaller. And that's how we have such an easy time keeping the Japanese maples more on the ornamental small kind of specimen uh, side of things for our flower bed. So I just wanted to mention those things because you might live in a mild climate and you might think that tree is going to get huge. Um, well, it probably does for you, but here for us, it's just more of a nice little, like you can almost pop them anywhere where you have a little bit more shade. Um, of course, the fact that it'll get a little bit of sun here is perfect because it'll help color up the leaves better. Um, if this was in a lot of shade, the leaves would be a lot more green and you wouldn't get a nice red color. So anyway, just wanted to talk about that, um, but I'm really excited about this. I think this whole area is coming together and we are planning on coming back and doing a few more planting uh, videos around here in some areas where they've just put some big rocks. So I'm excited for that. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.